Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I know some of you are still signing on, but we'll go ahead and, and get going. My name is Louise Sternberg, and I'm a member of the alumni engagement team with the College of Engineering and Applied Science. And I'm excited to be here this afternoon for our first family program. Jennifer Taylor, Assistant Director of the Integrated Teaching and Learning Program, is here to teach us about the basics of CAD using the Tinkercad 3D design app. The mission of the ITL is to provide curriculum and support for hands-on engineering education across all engineering disciplines for students from kindergarten to graduate school. And I know we have all ages represented today, so that's exciting. A few housekeeping items before we begin. Um, for optimum audio quality, we have all participants on mute. If you experience any audio or visual issues during today's webinar, please send us a message via the chat box within Zoom, and we'll try to troubleshoot for you. You can also contact Zoom support at 1-888-799-9666. Jennifer is excited to answer any questions you may have. Please submit any questions using the Q&A button, and that's at the bottom of your screen. Now it is my pleasure to introduce Jennifer Taylor, an expert in pre-college engineering education. I'll turn it over to you, Jennifer. Thank you, Louise, and I appreciate um, being invited to give this presentation. Um, again, our pre-college program with the ITL program is primarily in um, person, so going into a remote learning environment really forces us to think uh, in a different direction, and so Tinkercad is a really amazing um, web app that we've been using, and I'm really excited that I get to share it with the folks that are here, so thank you. All right, so we'll get into what Tinkercad is about. So what we'll do is we'll learn the basic interface of Tinkercad. We'll also do kind of a hands-on, get, get familiar with the interface through a keychain project. And then I'll have two projects. You can either choose your own, or if you want more of a guided walkthrough to kind of practice the different elements of Tinkercad, we'll do a build your own sound amplifier that works with smartphones. And so hopefully everyone has your Tinkercad account opened. And if not, just get onto tinkercad.com and you can sign in or join now. It does work with a Gmail login. And if there's any educators in the audience, uh, Tinkercad does work with Google, Google Classroom, which is great. And if you are joining just now, you won't, you'll want to create a personal account and then sign up with your email or your Gmail. So we're gonna start with what is CAD and then get into the basics of Tinkercad 3D design. So I have a, a short video here that I want to share. Um, it kind of gives the power of what CAD can offer, especially for our younger viewers that are here. It might give you some you know, motivation and some inspiration to see how Tinkercad has changed this young girl's life. So let me go ahead and get the screen up here and I will share a short three minute video with you. My first memory of a bike was getting out in the street for the first time, being scared, riding. I do BMX because it's fun going over the jumps, go fast, catching air, and hang out with friends. The team I race for is called Tough Girls. You get into shoots, and then they'll tell you which gate you're in. And we have gates one through eight. And then once you get in the gate, you put your tire in where you want it to be. And then I clip in, make sure my arm is on. The gate drops, I pedal fast and move my arms back and forth. You have to go as hard as you can till the finish line. One of my goals is to win a national, which is like a really big race. The highest place I've got was second place. I am a congenital amputee, which means born without. My arm is carbon fiber, and then there's a hook at the end that I designed that fits around the handlebar. There's a little cup at the bottom because my arm is skinnier at the bottom and wider at the top. 
and then we roll my liner over it that has a screw at the bottom that clicks into the bottom of my arm. So I was born without my left hand. A bunch of us amputees get together at Autodesk and design our very own fun prosthetic and we learn how to use a 3D printer and program. We were talking about ideas that I might have. I really wanted to put lights on my arm. The way my lights work is it is a weatherproof, flexible light LED strip that we put on my arm. I'm learning how to program so that the lights will stay on longer and do different light patterns. It'll be pretty cool when I ride at night just to see the lights. We've 3D printed side plates which go on the side of your bike and they have your number on it. And then we've made helmet holders. They can fit into a slot on the wall and, and they easy up and they hold your helmet off the ground. We designed those through Tinkercad and we used a 3D printer to make I think I would design something that like clips into my handlebar and also clips into my arm so it's just one piece. It sounds like something I need to work on. My name is Sydney Howard. I race BMX and I'm 15 years old. Right, so I hope that video kind of gave a, you know, a reason how important CAD can be to really change people's lives. It is a, a tool that engineers use quite often. And I'm going to share screen back to our side to kind of get us into our next step of our actual interface with Tinkercad. So you should see that was uh, Sydney's Tinkercad story. All right, so what is Computer Aided Design? That's CAD, that's the acronym for it. Um, and engineers, architects, even artists use CAD or Computer Aided Design. And they really use CAD to create precise 2D drawings, two-dimensional drawings, or three-dimensional 3D modeling. And so here we've got some representations of you know, a 2D and a 3D image. So 2D, two-dimensional, is like a side view usually, what you'll have um, looking in a flat plane like on a piece of paper. And you can also do 3D models. So if you've ever done Legos or worked in, say, video like the Minecraft building or Roblox, that's usually in a 3D dimensional perspective. So we use uh, two dimensions, length and width, but when we get into CAD design, you'll be adding in a third dimension, and that is the height, also known as the depth. So that kind of gives that three-dimensional perspective that we'll be working with. And in terms of CAD, there's a fancy term called spatial visualization. So when you are playing when you're a kiddo with uh, Legos, it really helps build that ability to see things in 3D. And there's a fancy term for 3D, also known as isometric view. So if we had, as you can see here, a picture of a dice, that's from the perspective or the three-dimensional view. But you could look at the dice in a two-dimensional or what we would call an orthographic view for each face. And so some of the tips when using Tinkercad, it does work with a variety of devices, but it is best to use a laptop or computer with a mouse, especially one that has, you know, the two um, left-right clicks and, as well as a scroll wheel. We'll be measuring in millimeters since that's what the STEM world uses. You can do it in inches, but the millimeters are definitely much more accurate, um, and that's the default measurement. And if you ever get lost when you're in the Tinkercad interface on the projects you know landing page there is this waffle logo for tinkercat and that'll get you back to your your home page also with tinkercat it's a little bit different than more advanced um, cad programs like say on shape you're not really doing a drawing uh, program but you're combining shapes and you want to make sure that the shapes are touching before you group them you want to make sure that your project is flat on the blue work plane that you see here and so, as I mentioned, it's a real simple way to look at all different views, whether it's a 3D or two-dimensional view. You'll be able to place your objects, scroll around, rotate, and then also combine them and group them. And that's what you're going to be working on hands-on in just a moment. Um, in addition to this webinar, I really want to stress that there are starter lessons and um, more advanced lessons and projects that you can kind of build your own 
you know, capacity of how to use CAD, and you can also um, save your projects and download them and share them as well. Okay, so hopefully everyone's into Tinkercad right now, and I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing and get into my um, CAD group plane. And so what we're going to be doing is kind of like a modeling of how do we use the interface of that um, CAD program. And we're going to do a basic key, key chain design. Um, again, make sure it's your project's flat, the objects are touching. Um, if you have any um, mistakes or something happened, like, oh my gosh, where did my program or my project go? Just go ahead and hit the back here, which I'll show you where that's at in a moment, or good old control Z. And again, any questions go to the Q&A. And with Tinkercad, it actually is um, better to use Chrome. It does work in other browsers, but um, that's probably the best default browser to use for it. Okay, is that coming across good? Okay, so what you should see is something like this once you're logged in. You may see more um, designs and ideas that you can work through, but as you get into Tinkercad, you can kind of add and subtract from your projects page here. So I'm going to go through and give a little bit of a, you know, breakdown as to what Tinkercad contains besides the 3D option. There's also a tab here to do circuits, and this has an Arduino-based simulator. And there's also a third part to Tinkercad that has code blocks. But basically, they're code blocks that you can help you um, program to design your 3D design. Within the circuits, there's also um, Arduino code that you can use with blocks or text. So it's a great way to get familiar with the actual uh, electronic side of Tinkercad. But we're going to stick with the 3D design. Um, from your own home landing page, you'll see this Learn tab. So go ahead and click on that. And this is where these starters and lessons and projects live. So we'll come back to this in a moment when we do our deeper dive project. So again, click on the upper left waffle icon of Tinkercad there, and they'll get you back to your projects page. And so what we're gonna do is make sure that we're in the design. It defaults to the 3D design choice, and we're going to go ahead and create a new design. So hopefully everyone can do that. And again, if there's any questions, feel free to reach out and put a question there in, in the Q&A box and I'll make sure I cover it. So let's just go through how this all works. So you notice up at the top, we've got, again, got our, our uh, icon logo that brings you back to your projects page. This bullet list is the projects or designs that are in your uh, account. And it always defaults to a crazy name. So as you click on it, you can rename it to anything that you want to name your project. So we'll just call it Keychain Design here. And this is the Tinkercad layout. For those of you that are Minecraft or Lego buffs, you can change your design that you're creating in Tinkercad into a Minecraft design or print them as Lego blocks. So we'll check that out later. On the right hand side, we've got the work plane, which is the blue plane that we've designed from. There's also a ruler that you can do when you're getting into more uh, advanced projects and want to really be precise with your measurements. And then we have the different components. The default is the basic shapes, which are, again, the shapes that you put onto the work plane and then group to combine. In addition in here, there are also text and numbers that we're going to use, um, text blocks, letters themselves, and the fun one that we're going to use later on uh, today as well is the character piece. So you can totally customize your design with some pretty cool uh, character settings there. But we're going to go back to the basic shape. So let's get familiar how, with how we actually can make the project. So go ahead and drag a cube onto or a box onto your work plane. And to do that, it's left click with your mouse and just drag. And again, here's the undo button. To undo what you've done, I mean, we'll go ahead and through here. So we've got a copy and paste. So if you're doing a design that you want to make multiple uh, copies of a portion of it, that's where those are. You can also duplicate. Uh, here's trash if you don't like something, or just delete the undo and the redo arrow. Uh, this is hiding objects, uh, grouping, ungrouping, aligning, and you can mirror. We're going to do some with the grouping and ungrouping and the aligning later on. So again, to select your item onto the work plane, you click it with your mouse, left click, and just drag, and then drop. And you'll notice that these different grips show up, and we'll kind of go through what each of those grips mean. 
So if you go to the bottom left and just highlight it, just click it, left click, you'll see that you'll see dimensions. And this is a 20 by 20 uh, cube, which is 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters uh, length and width. If I click on the middle uh, grip, you'll see that this is also a 20 millimeter high cube. So you've got the options to um, click and drag, and you can see that it'll change its dimensions. And again, uh, the undo button will take it back to the original. Or you can click in it and go right into the dimensions themselves and just type in what you want your object size to be. And let's say I want to make this taller. I would click here in the middle grip and let's put up to 50 millimeters. So it's pretty precise. There are some measurements here, but this is our scaling up measurements. So you'll notice as I'm changing in these other grips, these aren't necessarily changing with the defaults there. So it's good to kind of work in one or the other. I would say, you know, stick with the grips for your measurements. There's also these black grips. And what happens here is if I click and drag on the middle, it'll only change the object in one dimension. Whereas if I clicked on the grayish white grips, it'll change in two dimensions. And then there's also this cone at the top of the objects. And if you left click and drag on that, you'll see by the shadow that I'm actually raising this object up in space. So you might want to be able to stack them and add objects together. Okay, so what we're going to work on is we're going to make a keychain by using the, these interfaces. Oh, I should do, I, sorry, I wanted to go back to the directionals here. So you notice that there's a die here that kind of shows top, front. Um, this is also how you can zoom in and refocus your project. So if you click on the cube, you can see that you can rotate it and left click. You can look at the bottom. And if you want to get back to your set view you just hit the home button there and it'll take you back to the regular view you can zoom in with the plus zoom out um, and you can also then switch from a two-dimensional to the three-dimensional perspective i think it's best for our project so we'll stick in the three-dimensional default perspective and you can also zoom right into any particular object as long as you click on it it will let you focus on it and again that home uh, button lets you focus back to the standard view all right so with our keychain what we're going to work on go ahead and grab your box over there if you haven't done that yet and we're going to change our box to be 50 millimeters wide long sorry by 50 30 millimeters wide so we're going to go here and type in 50 and you should see that your box got longer. And now we're going to want to make it wider by 30. And then we're going to change the thickness of this keychain. And we're only going to have it be five millimeters. And so now you should have an object that looks something like this. This is the base of our keychain. And so to get familiar with how to move objects, again, just left click onto it. You'll notice that once the grips are highlighted and you'll see a blue halo, that object is selected to be dragged and moved wherever you want to be in the work plane. If you're going to be working with quite a large um, uh, project, you can change the default sizes of your grid here. This is a 200 by 200 millimeter work plane, which is fine for what we're going to do. Okay, so now we're going to go back over to the basic shapes and pull in another object. So find the tube and left click and drag onto your work plane. And again, you'll see that the grips are there. And so we're going to have this be the upper part of our keychain. And so we're going to make it be a 30 by 30 tube. So go ahead and change your dimensions there. You can either type them in or try to stretch it out and then we'll make this be the same depth which is five millimeters and so now you should have and then click off into any other part of the work plane to deselect an object so you should have these two objects so now we're going to look at how do we how do we group pro, uh, objects together so go ahead and click on your tube and bring it over to the other element of your keychain and just try to match them up here and we're going to zoom in you can either use middle of uh, the middle wheel of your mouse and scroll in or the plus icon over there and we can hide the shapes uh, menu as well by clicking that arrow and so now what we've got are two objects together 
and we're going to want to also look at aligning them. So before we group, we're going to align things. And to do that, we need to make sure that the objects are selected. You can either left click and then hold your shift key and left click again to select both objects. Or you can just draw a box by holding your left um, mouse click down and both objects are selected. And so when you come up here, you can see that the group icon is now highlighted. And so we're going to um, make sure they're aligned first, and that's the next icon over here. So when you hit the align, you'll see that these kind of black dots show up. And we want to make sure that our objects are aligned in the middle. So you click the middle dot there, and it should be good. Hey, Jennifer. And now we're going to go ahead and group <laughs> our objects. Yes. Can you answer what was the depth of the tube again? We have a okay. Everything is five millimeters. That's what I thought. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'll just like hang out a moment, make sure everyone's good there, um, and I'll undo just to re-show how we did this um, grouping. So just go ahead and drag your tube over to your rectangle shape here. And then we're going to go into selecting them both. Again, if you click anywhere on the uh, work plane, it deselects the objects that you have. It's nice to then draw the box with the left click and they're both selected at the same time versus independently or you do shift left click. And we're gonna go to our align key here. And you can see that um, we can align them based on whatever um, elements we want to, um, you know, top, bottom, side, et cetera. So we're, we're aligned here and I um, selected that. And we're good to go. Okay, so now let's go ahead and reselect our objects. And we're going to make them be a single object. So if you're going to be printing this or cut or laser cutting it, you want to make sure that your objects are joined. And that is again this shape up here that says group. There are, by the way, shortcuts for whether you're a PC or a Mac user. I'm just going to be using the commands or the tools that are on the actual um, Tinkercad interface. And then you can group. And you might have noticed that now they are the same color. You don't see your, your independent tube or um, your box shape there, and you now have the base for your keychain. And you could again look at the top view. What does that look like? Make sure it looks good. You can scroll down. You can look at the side view, make sure that everything's aligned. And if it looks good, home button kind of gives you back to that wider perspective. Okay, now we're going to have you learn how to integrate uh, lettering into your project. So again, this is back to our basic shapes. And I'm just going to hold off and see if there's any more questions before we go to the next step. So any questions from anyone? One thing I, I do want to share, in addition to um, using the cube, you can also right click your mouse to um, look at different perspectives and sides and corners of your project. All right, so let's go ahead and get into our uh, lettering. And you'll see under the basic shapes that there's a text and numbers option. And it defaults to the text box. So go ahead and click and drag a text box onto your work plane. And we're going to then now drop down on that shape box. And you'll see that you can actually put in the text that you want to have. So you put in your name, your pet's name, whatever you want. I'm going to put my name in there. And I realize, wow, that's still way too big to fit onto my keychain. So I'll need to change it. So to do that, you can come into here and change either through the grips, or you can change it into the shape dimensions here. So again, we're going to keep the height the same as our keychain, which is only five. And that should shrink it down. And it did, but I look here, I'm like, it's still a little bit too long. So I'm going to double click or click on that um, image. And I'm going to now change my dimensions, length and width. Remember this was 50 millimeters on your keychain for length and 30 for your width. So you want to make sure that your name fits within that. So I'm going to do mine at say 40 millimeters. And I'll probably do it by say 25. And so that should fit within that space. So now we're going to do another trick and learn how to make this be a negative space or a hole. So once you've changed your, the size of your 
text to fit within the keychain, just highlight that object or that text box and select whole. And so now you've got a, the negative image of it. So then you just left click and drag your name onto your keychain. And so we're going to do the same thing that we did before with aligning. So I find the easiest way is just to left click, drag, and align everything. I also like sometimes to look at a top view to make sure that things look good. You can choose then the align tool. And again, here are those guides that help you know, do you want to go to the left or to the right? And if I go to the right, you'll realize, well, that's not the place I want to be because when I print this or laser cut it, it's not going to work. But if I go to the middle and to the middle, it should help me to get my name centered. You can also click and highlight and drag it. Oh, you know what happened? I didn't have them both selected. So sometimes when you click on one and the other, you might deselect your object. So make sure they're both um, selected and that looks pretty good. And so then I can go back to my view here and just to make sure I don't have anything hanging off the edge, I can do my perspective to the front face and I don't have anything going below the work plane. In our next project, we'll show how to, how to take care if you do have a part of your object going below the printable surface space. And so there you go. Are there any questions about how to do the integration of the text? All right, I'll just kind of show if you wanted to then save and download this file, you would go to export. You can also import other files and then tinker them in Tinkercad but you would just select export and you can choose the type of file that works for you. The default usually is an STL file, but you'd also can save your file as um, a file that can be laser cut. And then you just would go ahead and download that. And then once you download your file, you can also share that with anyone, your friends, family, etc. All right, so we got through the first part of our project there. And again, if you hit the left icon um, in the upper left there, you'll see that my new keychain design is now saved here. And the nice thing about Tinkercad is it does auto save. So as you're designing your projects, you don't have to save it, it will save it for you. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing here and get into our next step. Any questions? Jennifer, um, it looks like a couple of people are asking um, to go over the save process again. Do you mind just showing how you save the file sure. one more time? Yep. Okay, um, make sure that I'm in the right screen. Am I in my PowerPoint one? Which one do you see? Which one do you think we're in? I see PowerPoint right now. Okay, let me just turn that. I'll get back into my Tinkercad. Okay, so you should see my um, projects page here. And I'll just go into um, just creating a new di design real quickly to show where that's at. So it's under the export. So once you have your design made, let's say I'm going to put this in here. I love it. I'm going to print that. I would then just come over to export after I maybe renamed it. So remember you name it here and then you can export your file. And then you would choose which file type you want. And uh, one of the default uh, reliable 3D printing files is a, an STL file. Or you can also laser cut your image. The design that we had would be, would be great for that. And you can also save it as a laser cutting um, capable file. And then you would just hit download. Um, you could also go direct to 3D printing if you're integrated with your computer to go ahead and straight print the object that you made. Does that help? All right, cool. So I'll get into now our next stage. And depending on where you are, your comfort level, where you wanna go, we're gonna move into the next options that we have. And you should see, um, this is the keychain that we just went through. And congratulations, you did your first Tinkercad project. Um, we can get more creative with it. And again, there's a lot of depth and opportunity to um, explore Tinkercad. Um, 
I would really suggest looking at their existing projects. And so that's what we'll look at next. And the one that I'm going to do a guided walkthrough in the last half of our webinar is the build a mobile amplifier. That's a help you, you know, project sound through your, your smartphone, or if there's another project you see of interest, go for that. So again, just the tips, make sure that your project is flat on the workspace and that you're touching and that you got, you know, if you don't panic, if things go wrong, just go ahead and control Z back to where you were comfortable and knew what was going on. And again, the waffle box, uh, box in the upper left brings you back to your homepage. It's kind of like your touchstone. And again, thanks for the questions that are being asked and I'm happy to provide any support. So uh, in your Tinkercad account, Go ahead and get into the learn. That's in the, again the top right section of your uh, menu bar. Uh, select projects and then select see all projects. So I'll just give you a moment to look through. If you're wanting to do the one that is the amplifier that's guided, that's going to be in the same um, uh, gallery of projects. So again, learn, select projects, see all projects. If you scroll down to row eight, Left hand side, you'll see build a mobile amplifier or again, choose your own project. And one thing, if you're going to be doing the phone amplifier, um, this is like a basic older iPhone. Um, so you, we're wanting to know what the um, depth of your phone is because you'll need to know how uh, wide to make the slot to slide your phone into and also how wide it is, okay? Any questions from that? Okay, hopefully people have found a project. And so I'm gonna stop sharing here and get back into my Tinkercad screen. And we will work through um, the amplifier. Again, if you're comfortable and you want to just go ahead and pick your other project, go for it as I'm going through this one and I'm happy to answer questions as well. So here we go. And so you should now see my uh, project here. And so I'm going to get back out of here and go back to my main projects page. And I'll kind of demonstrate what I just was mentioning about how to get to that amplifier. So again, the top menu bar under learn. And then you're going to go to projects. And then see all projects. And so you're gonna need to learn the basics of what we had just done with the keychain and a few more uh, tips and tricks. If you scroll down, you'll see our build a uh, mobile amplifier. And the thing I like about the projects is they do guide you through. Um, some things they don't give you the full instructions. So you, you obviously learn by doing and you just go ahead and click start. And I noticed a trick too when I was doing this earlier, which I'll share with you, that you have to save it between each step or else, you know, say, you know, say or sorry, copy and paste. Otherwise, you got to rebuild everything at each step of the different elements of the projects. And it's nice because they give you directions here on what to do. Um, we're just going to jump right into it. And so, as you can see, we're going to start with our cylinder. So go ahead and drag your cylinder onto your work plane. And it gives us dimensions of 70 millimeters wide and 110 millimeters tall. So again, we're gonna go back to our grips here and we're just gonna type in 70. And if you notice it, it comes out to be an oval shape. So I need to do my other dimension to make that work. And then to make it 110 tall, I would click the middle grip. Again, you can pull it up if you want, but I just find that it's a lot more accurate to actually um, just put the dimensions in directly. And if you notice, that's way too big for me to, to easily see. Um, so I can zoom out a little bit and I can also click and drag my object around with the, the left mouse uh, button. And so there we go. So now we're gonna go to the next step. And that's gonna be to bring in a cylinder. So uh, we're gonna bring in one that is a hole. In the older directions, they, don't, they didn't have the hole as default option on an object. So go ahead and bring in a hole cylinder, one that's a negative space. And so on this one, we notice that the directions are a little bit uh, smaller size dimensions. So 60 by 100 uh, millimeters tall. So again, just go in here and I'm going to show you a trick on how to combine these a little bit better. And we'll go back to 60 here so that this is a circle. And we're going to make it be 100 millimeters tall. Okay, and I'm going to left click and drag, make sure everything fits on my work plane nicely. And what we're gonna do on the next step 
is we're going to combine these two shapes. And there's a nice way to do that they don't really um, share with you in this. So I'm gonna give you a little tips of the trick here. One thing that's really nice to do is if you, hi you know, highlight uh, left uh, shift and left click and both objects are, are selected or click off and you just do that left click drag and both uh, objects are selected. We want to align them at the top. So make sure both objects are selected and you want to do your align and then you want to hit the top button. So that gives us then the cylinders at the same level, same height. And so now I'm going to just deselect by clicking anywhere. I'm going to left click and drag my uh, hole into the cylinder and I'm not going to align it on purpose. So I'm going to then just drag it in there, deselect. I'm now going to draw the box to select both together. And now I can align. And so I want to make sure that they're centered. So you can see here, I'm, I'm picking one of the uh, alignment locations. So it's centered in that direction and then centered in this direction. And so now this object will be, uh, these two objects will be combined into a single object. And now since they are um, both selected, I'm now going to do group. And what will happen is that hole gets taken out of the object. So I created a, a negative space in, in that cylinder. And that's going to be our speaker. All right? So I'm just going to keep going in this uh, window here versus going through each of the steps. So you can go through um, each of the projects step by step. But again, when you get to the end of the project section that you're in, make sure you select all by doing that left click drag and everything in your objects or in your project uh, highlighted and just control C. Or as we mentioned here, um, you can you know, copy and paste here. Okay, so I'm gonna put now the base of our uh, amplifier here. And you obviously realize that needs to be changed. So we're gonna make this be 80 cent, uh, millimeters long, and we're going to do, do 40 wide, and that will be, actually, I'm gonna make this one a little bit larger, my mistake, sorry, we're gonna go this, make it be 80. We need it to be a little bit wider than our, our, our cylinder. Okay, and so we now have two objects here. And if I go to the top, you can kind of see, yep, that, that should fit within that base pretty good. And to get back to my normal view, click the home, still too close. I can just zoom out with either my mouse or the plus minus zeros, okay? So now what we're gonna do is learn how to actually um, tilt objects to rotate them. So now let's go ahead and click on to your cylinder section and you'll see these arrows there's a top directional arrows and there's arrows along the bottom and let's go ahead and play with the ones on the bottom first so just what you want to do is make sure that your mouse is on the arrows and you can um, rotate your cylinder in, on the bottom plane i can see much difference there but we're just going to go back to undo but if i take these arrows and tilt left and right you'll see that I can change that. So I'm gonna go back to the undo here. And so we want our amplifier to be on a 45 degree angle. So to do that again, click on the arrow at the top and you can actually, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so you can see the measurements here. I can type in here, select the object and I can click right into that window like I did with the dimensions on the other objects and put in 45 degree angle, but that's going the wrong direction. So I'm gonna undo that and I wanna do a negative angle. So I'm gonna choose it, the arrows that will rotate it and I'll do a minus 45 degree angle. And so now I've got my amplifier tilted in the right direction. But one thing I wanna show you too is um, Part of our object now is below the plane, and I'll show you how to take care of that. But first, we want to put the base and our cylinder together. And so just do a simple highlight the cylinder and drag, then highlight, left click your base. And we're going to align stuff too. So we'll go to the top to make sure how do things look. 
So not super lined up. So I like to you know, get whatever perspective I need to to make sure that when I'm aligning, everything's going to look good. So we can click off and then highlight both objects with your left drag. We're going to go back to our align key. And again, you can see that we've got these guys and we want to make sure that they're aligned in the middle. And so that uh, shifted it to be equidistant in that base. And we can go back to our view, zoom out. I can click off anywhere to deselect the uh, line key. And again, I can right mouse click and get a feel with how things are looking. So, so far, so good. All right, so let's deal with this piece that's kind of protruding. That wouldn't work if we were, if we were 3D printing. So think of your work plane as the base that you're going to be printing within. Um, so the thing I like to do is to use the existing kind of like whole objects and we're going to take a box and just drag that over onto the work plane and there'll be a way that we can quote erase that protruding part of our object. So again here we need to make it a little bit bigger to make sure that we cover um, that space there. So we're just going to do 80. Yeah, we'll just go by 80 just to make sure that we're going to cover the whole base as well. And we're going to line this up. And so here's where you can use then that, you know, height, uh, changing the location of your object up in space or even below space. So you can go down below. And if I go to the front, you'll see that I'm now below my work plane. To be honest with you, this is the hardest part for me. <laughs> so I sometimes like to take the object I'm trying to erase and then just align them. And so they will match up. Let's go ahead and click on our cylinder. And we'll also then I like to shift left click on my box. That's the negative space one, the hole. And I'm going to align them. I'm going to probably work from my top view. I think it would be a little bit easier. And I want to make sure that they're aligned um, in the middle. And I might have to shift it down a little bit and we'll just see what it looks like. So again, a little bit of fine tuning. This is where the spatial visual you know, capabilities come in handy. So I like to right click and make sure that things are aligned. Let's look at the bottom. Yep, as long as I've got that protruding part um, you know, covered, I can take it out. And it looks like I need to realign my cylinder, but that's okay. So what we do here, we'll like left click on that cylinder again shift and left click on the box and we're going to group these and so what happens now if you look at the bottom is it cut up off that section of our base okay and so as you can see i need to do a little bit of rearranging here click off let's rearrange everything in a line and maybe the top view might be better and so now we should be realigned with the center of our amplifier onto our work plane. And then click off anywhere to deselect a line. And so now you have kind of like the basic shape of your amplifier. We've got one more piece to add in here. And that's going to be the slot that your um, phone is going to be sitting in. So to do that, we'll bring over another negative space so we can cut that out. And I know with my phone, it was, it's got a, um, you know, outer box on it. So I had to take out for that depth as well of my phone. So my phone's pretty narrow, um, not super narrow with that outer box, but 11 millimeters is great for me. And I want to make sure that it's going to be wide enough to go across the cylinder as I'm going to be placing it. So I'm going to make that a little bit wider than I probably need. And for the height, I'm going to click in the middle again. I sometimes found that finding the height dimension was tricky. Just remember, it's usually the middle grip there. So just go ahead and click on it. And I'm going to make mine probably 30 just to give, give me enough depth. All right. Any questions? Are we doing good? Jennifer, there is a question about where can you um, where can you print these? Do you have any suggestions in the community? 
That's a really good question. Um, I am not sure about like, you know, public assets sometimes access. Sometimes libraries have maker spaces. So I would definitely check with your um, public library to see if you can do that. Um, the other option, um, I don't know if any like office supply, um, you know, stores may have 3D printing. I know a lot of schools eventually when they get back in action um, are bringing in 3D printing. So I would definitely start with the libraries first, but great question. It's still good to design and save. All right, so just to kind of help us um, get the slot here, we're gonna highlight our slot that we've got here. And I'm gonna zoom in so you can see it a little bit better. And I'm going to take my negative space block and just shift it over to the side. And again, these are the arrows. I wanna put this onto a 45 degree angle that'll fit right in this part of my amplifier. So if I click on here, I can either choose to just tilt it to negative 45, or I could again, just type in that dimension there. And so now I'm going to take my object, I'm gonna raise it and I'm gonna drag it over here. And that's what's so great about 3D, you know, CAD design, you can do a lot of things that you can't do in the real world. And let's just make sure that we line it up so it looks in a decent location, maybe not too far back. Let's maybe get a little front view here. I think I might need to go a little further you, back. Can you verify the height and width again? Is it 70 by 80? We had a question. On this negative space box? Um, maybe go over all of it. Oh. Sure. I, you know, this, it, can, it can be pretty general. Um, I did 80 by 80 for the base of, of um, the cylinder and I, and the, or sorry, the, the base of the amplifier and the cylinder was 70 by 110. And then this negative space box, I just measured my phone earlier, but I think a good uh, safe um, depth would be probably 12 uh, millimeters and any dimension in terms of the height, I chose 30. And we wanna make sure that we are um, wider than our um, cylinder, so I can maybe even just drag this a little bit more out uh, to make sure that I'm getting a cut all the way through. Okay, and so then I'm gonna get back to my front view so I can work a little bit better with this. And so it should be something like this and I can kind of, you know, drag it and move it up a little bit. And then left click drag to the side. So the main thing is about, if you have a really tall phone, you have to think about counterbalancing things. But if your depth is pretty good with your, your slide going into your amplifier, you should be fine. And again, with the, in the project, there are you know, detailed directions to kind of help you get through it. Um, they are missing some steps, like I said, you know, combining the, um, the cylinder and the uh, negative space hole. But all right, so that should be kind of what you got going on. Don't worry if this negative space is, is super aligned. Um, but what we could do is highlight it and the cylinder and go to the top view. Oops, yeah, I did get shifted. So now if I click my align key, I can shift them, shift them so that they're going to be um, you know, into the middle. And so I wanna make sure I'm choosing my box. Oops, I should choose all of them. Aha, I love the undo key. Let me undo this. I'm gonna select everything. I missed the base. I'm gonna hit align and I'm gonna center them in the middle. So everything's nicely aligned along that, the axis there. And so now we wanna get rid of that space. So as we did before with the keychain, left click, select all, and we're going to go ahead and group them. And so now you can see that everything turned the same color. We now have our amplifier all designed and it's ready to be printed. But before you do that, you can actually customize it. So if you click on your amplifier and you click on the color, you get a nice color palette. So you can make it any color that you want. You can also choose multicolor and have different colors within the shapes. 
And you can also uh, choose a custom color on the wheel and get whatever hue you want. So obviously it depends really on what um, the PLA that you're using to print with, it'll be whatever color that is, but just for the design itself, you've got a lot of options here. Me, I really like to have a pink or purple. We'll go with the hot pink. And here's where you can also then add within your um, object, like maybe add some characters, um, details. So you can kind of scroll down and you know, add a peace, peace sign. I put an ice cream cone on mine, um, some bunny ears, whatever. And you put your name on there and you'd be ready to 3D print after you then exported it. And then choose the file, like STL. And then I would just be able to um, download that and it would be saved. And if I went back to my projects page, I would be able to see that this is actually now saved also in my um, that was just taking a while to populate, but it would be within in my uh, project's recent designs. So any questions on that? I see that we're getting close to the top of the hour. Uh, one thing I do, um, I think it's probably a good place to stop there, but again, I would definitely recommend checking out the circuits and the code block piece as well. Um, let me just go ahead and stop sharing there and I'll bring you back to other ideas for getting more Tinkercad projects that you can work with. And that would be looking at um, Instructables or Thingiverse. So this is a place for you to upload and share your files, or you can download other people's ideas. Um, you can, and the nice thing about it is if you download a Tinkercad file, you can also then continue to tinker that design that you um, are building on. So it's really nice open source um, CAD you know, program to use. And I think it's really good for anyone, you know, K to whatever age. Um, it's a great way to kind of get that first step into how does CAD work? How do I get familiar with the spatial visualization part? Um, so yes, I hope that uh, folks feel comfortable enough to kind of get into it and start messing around. And again, there's a ton online. There's also a, a Tinkercad YouTube channel, which has a lot of great um, tutorials and videos there. So thank you. I'm happy to take any questions as well. All right. Well, it, it looks like we don't have any questions, but I can see how people would just maybe want to stay on and tinker for a while. Thanks so much, Jennifer, for leading us through this great lesson. And um, we are going to follow up with the slides um, so that, you know, if you missed something, I know it was kind of fast paced, we will follow up tomorrow with a message. There will also be an opportunity, uh, opportunity for you to give us any feedback, and we'd really appreciate that too. And also there will be information on upcoming events. Um, so thanks again for joining, and we hope to see you again soon. Thank you.